It's pretty cool every time I get to speak, it's like I'm speaking, preaching to the choir. <laughs> well, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this evening and everyone that's assembled here. And I just thank you for the words I'm going to speak tonight, Dad, that they can just take them to heart and apply them where necessary. And I just thank you for being with us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Pastor Carmen always gets me in trouble when he told me to take time and examine yourself. And every time I turn around, I'm examining myself, and I don't find anything, right? No. <laughs> I have an area in my life where I don't remember many people, but people remember me simply because of how I made them feel. When I go out with friends somewhere, they said, leave the people alone because they know I'm going to say something to them. When someone is waiting on me, I ask how they're doing. Usually they say, good. I say, good? You work at such and such. You're doing phenomenal. It just changes their attitude. They always remember me after that. I went to breakfast at King's, and I told my server she was very special because I had taken the time to have breakfast with her and the king instead of down on the farm. Those people will never forget me. <laughs> Allegheny Valley Hospital. This is one of my good ones. I go to the information desk where the volunteers are, and I ask if I can buy Kennywood tickets. That freaked them out. You know, they were calling people, do we sell Kennywood tickets now and all that? <laughs> and I, I said, no, no, I'm just messing with you. Those people will never forget me. I just enjoy talking to people and making them happy. When examining myself, I learned that I was a hoarder. Think about that. I got all these people's attention, then I just talked to them and just walked away. I was a hoarder. I had access, but wasn't pressing for the open door. And that's what came back to me. Once I got their attention, the next step was I should have pressed for the open door. And I didn't. I just moved on. I have great riches, and guess what? I was just keeping them to myself. I could have shared it with them. I thought, wow, a true hoarder. I now seek the open door in all my conversations. I want everybody to do, repeat after me. No more hoarding. No more hoarding. <laughs> that is true. And we all have those situations, and we have to think when we can get Jesus in there through that open door. Many seem to have lost their way. Pastor Harold was talking this morning about there's no standard, no self-control. The Bible is our standard. Remember he talked about SOP, Standard Operating Procedure? That is our standard. I hear people praying all the time for more wisdom. I need more wisdom, God. What can I do? Look at Proverbs chapter 1. Get that for me, John. All this coming up. God has already told us in Proverbs chapter 1, if you want wisdom, here it is. <laughs> what can you say? Verse 1 says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. People have told me, or pastors have told me time and time again, read the Proverbs, read the Proverbs. There's a lot of wisdom in there. And there is. That's what the true standard is. To be, receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Even as an old man, I need knowledge and discretion. <laughs> a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise, and the dark sayings. In the world today, we've got to come back to the Bible as a true standard. Because that's where everything... That's where the level playing ground is. Get that wisdom. I was thinking, I told Pastor one time, it looks like we've removed the boundaries that were in place for our good. Throughout the word it talks about not removing the boundaries. And I thought about the properties and the little markers on the corner. And when night comes, you go out and take a little marker and move it. <laughs> That's not good. It's not supposed to do that. We've removed so many boundaries in our life that we've developed gray areas because there's no black and white anymore. There's gray. And if you keep, the world is constantly pressing on us, pressing on us, and we just keep gravitating toward those gray areas. In my life, I talked about one time I went through the valley, and I explained that to several of you. And that's, uh, I had silenced the Holy Spirit because if the Holy Spirit was active, 
I wouldn't have gone to those gray areas. But just with the world pressing on you every day, your gray areas keep expanding. That's why you have to come back to the solid foundation and eliminate those gray areas. Now my markers are in alignment with the Bible. I tell you, if I do something and I'm even thinking wrong, the Holy Spirit is beating me up. <laughs> so I'm not going down that wrong path again, simply because I'm trusting what the Word says. Receive the Holy Spirit, get born again, and the Holy Spirit will convict you. I used this as an analogy when I was a little kid. Remember, your parents would tell you, it's hot, don't touch. You touched it anyway, right? <laughs> At least once. But after that, you knew better. And the Holy Spirit now just tells me, hot, don't touch, not even looking in that direction anymore. Turn to Proverbs chapter 4. When I talked about the world beating you down, I had several instances in my life, and I could see over a period of time how I had changed because the world was beating me down. When I was 12 years old, and I explained one time, I grew up on a dairy farm, and I was hit this wet concrete and I fell down and busted my two front teeth out. And they were laying there on the ground, and God said, put them back. So I picked them up, put them back. These are the same two front teeth that were out there laying on the ground. And I never thought about it anymore about that until I was getting older, thinking about different events that happened in my life where it's just, to me, it was normal. When I turned 50, yeah, ooh, 50. <laughs> 50, that was mean because uh, being in the military, I used to have a physical every year, and my health was always excellent. Once I turned 50, the doctor said, you got high cholesterol, high blood pressure. I said, where'd all this stuff come from? I was good last week. And he says, everything your parents had, the gene pool has kicked in. Well, along the line, later I started flinching. I started having these tremors. And I thought, oh, what's this all about? And then my sides felt like somebody was squeezing me. And uh, I started, couldn't walk right. I was, you know, I was in bad shape. Uh, they put these eye tests with the colors and visions and stuff, and I couldn't distinguish them. I was losing my eyesight and everything. So they sent me to a doctor to get an MRI. I don't know if anybody's had an MRI, but the first time I had one, the thing was clunking, and I said, oh, my God, it's sucking my brains up. <laughs> and it was clunking, 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 and a little mirror was right in front of my face, and I couldn't see anything, and I just did not like that at all. So they said, uh, you've got multiple sclerosis. You've lost the nerve endings. That's what's causing all the problems that you have. I thought, wow. And they said, to confirm this, we need to get another MRI. I said, I am never going back in that thing again. <laughs> so they gave me these little pills. They said, take these pills, they'll relax you. And I took the pills, and I barely remember the MRI. <laughs> but they confirmed that I did have an advanced stage of multiple sclerosis. And they told my wife, um, to get hospice care, because I was going to need long-term care, get a wheelchair, I, I was gone, there's nothing could be done, it's not healable, all that good stuff. So about two or three months went by, and I'm going through all this flinching and stuff, and then one night I just said, God, I don't need this. Let's thank you for your healing. This is done. The next day, it was gone. So I went back to the doctors, and the doctor said, uh, no, no, no. Our, our things show that you got it. There's something wrong. We need another MRI. I said, oh, here we go again. So instead of giving me an MRI there, they sent me to Walter Reed Hospital. That's where the president goes and stuff. And they did it in the middle of the night. It's like, everybody's gone. Bring him in. Get him in there and check him out. And it was uh, down in the tunnels and the valleys and stuff where, where they had me go. And they checked it. And the next day they came out and they says, well, we must have made a mistake. There's nothing wrong with you. So I said, well, God healed me. No, 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 there's just nothing wrong with you. So it took me a couple weeks to believe for God to do that. Where when I was a little kid, it was instantaneous. So see how the world had beat, beat me down? Because I hadn't even thought about asking God. When I was little, that was the first thing. I said, wow. There are things called... Um, I call them significant emotional events, where something happens in your life, and you remember where you were when it happened, yeah, major things. <laughs> and uh, I jumped out of an airplane one time. I did, went skydiving. 
And that was great. And I used it as my significant emotional event. When something comes up in my life, I says, Shh, I jumped out of an airplane. <laughs> this, this can't be that bad. <laughs> and that itself was a, I'd recommend it, actually. It was a good experience. So, <laughs> that's just laughing. Why? I'm not going to an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, now my markers are in alignment with the, with the Bible and the Holy Spirit is correcting me in each no situation. I would never go down some of the pathways I've been down in the past simply because the Holy Spirit is going to beat me up. I don't want that pain. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 1 says, Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. And just reading through the word constantly, there's just so much stuff in here, good stuff to just remember and keep going over and over. And when you pray for understanding before you read it, then God just opens up more stuff. I've seen scriptures that i read hundreds of times, and I see something new when I read it again, simply because God does that for you. For I was, in my, father's, for I was my father's son tender, and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. When I was in the valley and I was going through the stuff I was going through, my mind would think about the word. Think about the word. I'm going to get out of this sometime. I'm going to get out of this. And eventually I did. But I just didn't give up. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she shall deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I thought about that because uh, I'm 64 now, and when I was in the valley, I was... 60. <laughs> so I'm out running in the streets with these young kids at 60 years old. And uh, if it wasn't for grace, I'd probably be dead. Because <laughs> uh, now I told somebody at the Y the other day, I, I go to the Y more now that I'm over 60 than I did ever in my life. And the lady says, you know, it's a blessing that you can do that. And that is true, because God, God has really blessed me. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. And as I get old, that's a big thing, because I'm, I'm starting to get kind of wobbly. <laughs> so, you know, it's just a blessing to know that God is still there. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. And are not into the path of the wicked, and not in the way of evil men. You know, I said to Pastor Carmen one time, we were down at West Point County Prison, Wicked is pretty cool in that wicked draws more wicked. You don't see on wicked people hanging with wicked people. And then you see wicked and you get a little bit of wicked in there and it just sucks them all in. <laughs> yeah, it sucks them in and the wicked get wickeder. <laughs> you know. When I was in the valley, a um, guy said one night, let's, let's go to Walmart and rob somebody. In normal life, I wouldn't have had that thought. But that was the wicked encouraging. That's what they do, stupid stuff like that. So, wow. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For they weep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. And that entire group, it was like when the sun went down, <laughs> they came out. Yeah, it was amazing. And uh, you hang around with them long enough, and the night becomes the day. You see, just the, the night like you did during the day. So that's how the wicked works. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more into the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. And that is true. Um, everybody that I used to live with is in some type of detention. <laughs> and God spared me because uh, I, I wasn't stupid, stupid. And you can only do stupid stuff for so long <laughs> when you say, that's enough. I'm done with this. It's not good. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. 
Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. When I was thinking about this series I'm studying right now, everything was evolved around the heart. That wasn't me. <laughs> everything evolved around the heart. And you have to keep your heart with all diligence. Uh, it's just amazing how much you put into your heart, which you're going to manifest in your life. So if you want good things in your life, then you put good things into your heart. If you want the weird things, then you put weird things in there. <laughs> and hopefully we don't weird things in our heart. But the, the heart was a key. It was almost in every paragraph I was reading. The heart, the heart, the heart. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. That, that one is pretty cool because I was in the military. I grew up with a froward mouth. <laughs> That's what we did. And then once I got into the word, it started changing according to the word. I started losing that. But do you think once in a while that stuff would pop up? Just not thinking, bam, there it is. And to have a good brother in Christ to tell me, hey, you just said, I was like, wow, I'm sorry, I didn't even hear it, because we were just used to it. So that, that is another thing to say why we should have good brothers and sisters in Christ, to help us keep straight on the straight and narrow. Let the eyes look right on, and let the eyes look straight before thee, like I said, on the straight and narrow. Ponder not the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand or to the left. Remove any foot from evil. You know, sin is fun <laughs> for a while. <laughs> then you realize it's not where you want to go. <laughs> yes, and that's why you have to keep your foot from evil. So what I said is consistently take time to examine yourself. Again, I blame Pastor Carmen for telling me that. <laughs> and uh, constantly I just find things that I would normally not think about unless I was sitting there thinking about examining myself like this tonight, you know, I was a hoarder you know, I was, had all these riches and all this abundance and I wasn't telling everybody about it like I should I asked you to point to me and say no more hoarding I got a note in here, tell each other to point to the person next to you and say no more hoarding <laughs> no more hoarding Share it with everybody. You know, we've got a great life in Christ, and that's what you need to share with everyone. In order to have self-control, we need to give our whole selves everything over to Christ. Give everything over, and then the Holy Spirit can direct us. Like I said, that, just thinking about the Holy Spirit beating me up for something that's not right, I'm not going down that road. Keep our decisions within the boundaries of the Bible. That's where the wisdom is. When you make something and you know, talk to God, make a decision, make sure everything's right online, and you're going to get the blessings out of it. My page is stuck together. When the prayers go up, what happens? The blessings come down. When you're spiritually sick, you don't need a flu shot, you need a word shot. We call that in the military, we used to call that a, a force multiplier. You know, America's got the greatest military on the face of the earth. And if the enemy's coming over there, it's wonder why we don't deal with these ISIS people. It's like, boom, done, move on. And that's what the word is. The word is our force multiplier. Remember, God is in control. You do your part, let him do his part so you can receive his blessings. Amen? And that's why I had to share it with you. Thank you. Thank you. That's the word. Be encouraged. Wisdom. You know, I was saying, uh, as I said before, uh, Sister Bates is one of those people that always has wisdom, always has a word of wisdom. And uh, wisdom doesn't come easy. You know, there's a, there's a price to pay. And I'm um, thankful. God, give us wisdom. We need wisdom. It's, it's uh, I was telling those folks today, I, I shared with them a little bit what I shared last week about leaving your first love. And, uh, you know, why that, that church in Ephesus had a transformational power, the power of the Holy Spirit that changed 
the people around them that, that brought about a change in, in their, in their uh, surroundings. So Lord, will you raise us up that we would have that kind of power, that we would cause a riot. They caused a riot. It was a righteous riot. And uh, that you would raise us up and empower us and help us be sold out. Like, like Lou said, don't be a hoarder with what God has given you. Be willing to use it. And if, if churches, and I know there's good pastors that encourage their people to be witnesses for Christ. It's a dying world. Uh, I don't know if some of you may have uh, got in the mail. They're, they're mailing out the little brochures. They're having a prophecy conference. Anybody get one of them in the mail? We got one up at the uh, Clarion, I guess. Well, they, they do that every couple of years. Those are Seventh-day Adventists. And they send them out. And what they'll tell you is, they'll, you go to like a three-day conference, and at the end they'll tell you that if you worship on Sunday, you'll take the mark of the beast. Okay, that's what, you know, that's what they lead up to. That's it. Somebody put a, C, a CD on Rose's car today. Did you, did you all get one? Uh, I didn't watch it, but I, I pretty much know where that's coming from, there's, there's a guy that says if your church has a 501c3, then you're serving the devil. So, and, you know, uh, and that's, I, I just saw the, I mean, I didn't watch it, but I got a pretty good chance, you know, a pretty good idea of what, what they're saying. And uh, so, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. There's all kinds of voices out there. And uh, now with the Internet, you know, anybody can get on the Internet and have a web page for a couple bucks and make it look like it's like a worldwide, you know, a worldwide organization when I mean, it's about like two or three guys in a dark room somewhere with a, you know, in between video games they've got a website. But the thing is, we got to be equipped and prepared to be witnesses to a lost and dying world. We've got to examine ourselves. And, and I'm, I'm glad Lou said that. You know, I challenge myself to examine myself. I have to do that first before I tell anybody else to do it. Because that way they can't point at me and say, well, what about you? You know, and well, yeah, I do too. You got to. Gee, uh, Paul said, let a man examine himself. So I hope, I encourage you all to do that tonight. Uh, and every day, to look at yourself, look at ourselves as a congregation, as individuals, as a body of Christ. Where are we, you know, God, let us start a riot. Let us change. Let us, let us have such an effect that it changes the economic climate of our surroundings. Anyway, I'm not going to preach another message. Thank you, Lou.